the foot and you leave it on there for about 20 seconds, take it off, re-wet it and apply it again so the cast will stick to the foot. Once that the uh, cast is cured, then you can pick it up and trim off anything that, that you don't like, any wrinkles that might have come up or a uh, high spot that you might have. You can either use your knife or you can use a rasp. Uh, some people use a little disc grinders uh, just so that you've got a nice contour to the bottom of the foot so the horse has some, uh, something nice to walk on. Um, if you want to add a little concavity with the grinder or something, you know, by all means, go, go for it. A lateral extension on here. What you want to do to start with is you're going to need more than you think you're going to need because you can always remove it later. I was doing so good. Steady. And then just add it. Now the nice thing about doing it this way also is you don't have to worry about thermal. You don't need to worry about thermal convection. If you're doing this on uh, a live horse without casting, you got to be careful that you don't end up burning them here a little bit because you don't want to lay this on so quickly. You want to lay a series of strips, not so much per strip as I'm laying on here. Now this will make the, the hoof put on more hoof. Correct. We're going to change the biomechanics of it so that we're now going to bring the foot back in the center of the bony column. And now what we want to do is just swing it around so we've got the bottom of the foot and make sure that we've got enough support on the bottom of the foot as well. And it's always good to put a little bit more on than you think you need. You can always take it off. You can always add a little bit more too, but it means using up another tip. Um, I try to put on enough the first go around to make it work. Here we're going to uh, demonstrate how by Cutting the foot up in segments, we're going to be able to see the medial lateral balance of the foot. Um, as you can see, we've added a, a, an extension onto this foot. Now we're going to cut slices, medial laterally slices, to see how accurate we were able to read the foot by just using landmarks on the, on the hoof, especially the collateral grooves. I'm looking at the first section that we've taken off. What we're going to do is a series of cuts going medial laterally to see where we are in balance. Where on this particular specimen, what we're more concerned with is getting the, the, the hoof in the center of the bony column. We have the luxury here of being able to cut this to make sure that we are. You can see the overabundance of hoof here, the lack of hoof here, the need to start adding this lateral extension that we have to compensate and make up for this over on this side. So this is our first cut. We're going to do another one. Now this clearly shows, after cutting this up, the difference between the distance here and the distance here. And you can see by adding that lateral extension we're going to bring that foot more in, in, in harmony. But right now you've got much more of the foot going this way. You're higher here, lower there. Here's, here's another really good, good picture of it. There's your frog. There's your wall. Here's your other wall. Keep in mind now that we've got it kind of backwards. It's actually this way. So keep in mind when I flip it it's actually going to make it backwards but you're looking now at where we added the wall. See how much similar we are? The distance, if you're gonna take the center for the frog here and the distance here, we're much, much closer. But before, you can see the difference. It had to been added to the wall in order for balance. Now is a series of cuts that is going to show what's going on. First cut, we can see the need for the, lat for the extension. This is bringing the foot back into more symmetry. As we go to the next one, as we go to the next one, you can see the value of adding that lateral extension. I can't overemphasize we need the lateral extension for proper stimulation of the coronary band and for proper biomechanics. Adding it from the bottom only is just going to vault that wall. You have to put the cast on and then add that lateral extension. You can see how much clearer that's bringing it in. This one you can kind of see the frog taking the center point of the frog here, the center point of the frog here. We're getting closer and closer. If we look back on this way, give me your mind, we flipped everything around, um, but we've, we've basically got the same thing. Whoops! And it's starting to get a little bit more evident here that your, your coffin bone is also crooked. Mm. But you're looking at it here, mm. we've got the, the yeah, same need. Huge. It is crooked. Really amazing. 
So you can see the needle. Well, what we did, yeah, what we did is we added the distal aspect of it. We added some distal length and we added some lateral. So you, we, we're, we're definitely addressing this fact that the whole horse is slipping down. Now the other thing that I want to do is just show how important it is to read your collateral grooves. Okay, what, what we have here is a series of um, slices that really going, are going to start to talk more about collateral grooves. I think the collateral grooves are extremely important to read. Um, I think not reading them is, is really kind of dangerous. I think that you, you've got to read them, clean them out very accurately. If we look at the collateral grooves on this horse here, you can see that here's the frog, here's the collateral groove here, here's the collateral groove, here's the central sulci. Um, so by reading these very accurately, we're going to see where the whole frog is and everything. This is going to give you a very accurate assessment of what's going on inside. If you look at the same thing, we've got our collateral grooves. There's our collateral groove, there's our collateral groove. Everything kind of corresponds to everything else. What we're going to you know, need to see is the depth here versus the shallowness there corresponds to the collateral grooves. This one's deeper, got greater depth. This one's shallower, got less depth. They always tell the truth. And it's a very, very simple thing to read. So if we look at it, whoops, I missed part of it. If we read the first part of it, when we had the collateral grooves out before, what we can do now is, hopefully, we're going to start to take this apart to show how much support we have. What we've got now is we've got a cast on the foot that's giving some good caudal support, but we're going to start to explain why. What we have now is we have good ground support and wall support as well. So we've got vertical integrity and lateral stability. We're stabilizing the whole hoof. How are we doing it? By an exact copy of the foot. So by looking at these collateral grooves, we can now start to read it much more accurately. This one's not as long, this one's as long, and it corresponds to the same thing. Central sulcus, reading the collateral grooves. Critically important, shallow, deeper, longer, shallow. So now we've got, what we've got, we've got our We've, we've got a great, I mean, you look at the support that this horse has now. We've got great support in the collateral grooves, the sulcus and the collateral groove, plus we're stabilizing the wall. We're connecting the walls via great stabilization through the collateral grooves. Now when we go to take this off, what we're going to have is the difficulty of taking it off. Here is a perfect, perfect dupe, uh, match between this and the hoof. You can see all the little nooks and crannies. It's, it's an exact negative of this foot. So when you put that in, you can see it. We take this off. So we're not creating any pressure points because it's a perfect match to it. Valuable here is looking back at the support that we have. Frog, we've got great, great caudal support because we are, we are supporting the whole caudal aspect of the hoof. Yet we're adding wall stability and we're able to, through our super fast, create an extension that most matches this, adding some distal length, brings the coffin bone better into balance. And we saw all this by looking at the hoof capsule, not by just needing, you know, the radiographs. It, trust me, the radiographs would be great, but with good, accurate observation of the hoof wall, you're going to be able to read this. You're going to be able to read read that the collateral groove isn't in the center, so it's not, the hoof is off to one side, the collateral depth is different, so you know that the coffin bone is sitting a little bit askew. And then when we take this thing off, again, we've got a beautiful contour of the bottom of the foot, so we're, we are adding support both through the walls from medial laterally, and we're adding support coming up from the ground. What well, we've got the same thing. This is a beautiful hoof wall that's helping to support this not so good hoof wall. So we've got a perfect hoof wall here because we have an imperfect hoof wall there. Very, very simple. Have uh, these two are exactly. This is an exact model of this foot. So we, what we've done is dissipated the weight on a much greater area and added stability where we want. When we start to take it apart, we'll notice that we have the symmetry that we needed. So if we wanted to add this to show how well that fits, it fits right in there. So as we go.